This is Gene Montrose Stelling. Welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast recorded live to tape from Williamsburg in Brooklyn. This is episode 483, originally aired March 14th, 2020. Hi everyone, I hope this finds you well wherever you are and whatever time of day you're getting a chance to listen to this. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Every single week in the podcast, our goal is to help you to move past the basic recipe of tapping so you can actually master the art of delivery. By doing this, you'll learn to find root causes faster, clear issues quicker, and have longer lasting results with your tapping. Today, we're going to spend some time talking about and tapping for one of my new favorite portmanteaus, Comparanoia. Before we do that, two quick announcements. First of all, is we have a free 10-part guide that you can use to help you to eliminate self-sabotage with tapping. All you need to do is go to tappingqa.com, click on the big blue button if you happen to be listening to this on the website. Right now, up at the top of that upper right-hand column, you'll see a blue button there as well. Every single day for the next 10 days, you will receive one part to help you to just do a little tapping, to make a difference, to take action, to move forward in an easier way. Again, it's absolutely free. Don't miss that opportunity. Secondly, I would like to thank all of the supporters of the Tapping Q&A podcast. I really appreciate the fact that you voluntarily make sure that this podcast can show up every single week for not only you, but people all over the world. If you would also like to support the podcast as a way of saying thank you for this great work, as well as receive some bonuses and to ensure the show keeps moving forward in a productive and useful way. All you need to do is go to tappingqa.com slash support. That's tappingqa.com slash support. And once again, thank you to all of those who are supporting the show. Comparanoia is a great little portmanteau. A portmanteau is when you take two words and you put them together to create one word. Um, and it's really pretty obvious. It's, it's the combination of comparison and paranoia. And the word comparanoia has kind of made its way to the front of our consciousness over the course of the last couple of years, because we are now in a situation where because of the way that we engage with social media, even if it's just in a cursory way, what we're doing is we are constantly bumping into well curated examples of what people's lives kind of look like, because most of us are not putting things onto social media, which are a 100% representation of what is going on in our life. Now, that doesn't mean that most of us are being dishonest on social media. There are people who do do that. They touch up photos, they change the way that they look for whatever reason. But for most of us, even if we're not in a situation where we are actively photoshopping photos, we are putting our best foot or our best face forward. You know, when I'm going to post a picture on Instagram, which is my social media of choice, just because I like looking at really pretty things that other people have created, oftentimes I will take three or four photos of a particular thing that I want to post. Then I might spend as much as 10 or 15 minutes playing around with the filters to make the picture look a little bit better. And in the process of doing that, not only am I touching up the experience that I'm having, I'm being really careful about what I share one of the things that I spend a lot of time tapping with my clients on when they're creating content or video or something that they're going to be selling is the reminder that no one is going to see anything we share until we decide to share it, which in the creative process can be a really comforting thing because as I'm creating something, I get the chance to suss out what is exactly right and how it works best for me. But at the exact same time, what this can do is... This puts us in a circumstance when people are talking about their lives where they're only showing what is best. And when I look at your social media feed and I compare it to what I'm experiencing internally, emotionally, day to day, it's really easy how I'm going to show up feeling like I'm lacking. Because what I'm doing is I am comparing your well-curated facade to my internal experience. And this is something that my clients deal with all of the time, even when we are not talking about something like social media, just the way that we navigate the world, that we always assume or almost always assume that the facade that people are presenting is how they're emotionally feeling. 
And the truth is, to the outside world, there's no difference between acting brave and being brave. And so if I am struggling with something and the person next to me looks like they're confidently handling it, I automatically assume that they are confidently handling it, which in reality probably is not what is going on. And so because this is the case, because we are just inundated with these pictures, it becomes really easy just scrolling through social media to feel bad because we feel like we're behind. We feel like others are doing it better. We feel like others are being much more successful. So today what we're going to do is we're just going to take a few moments to tap on this idea of comparanoia and how we can feel more comfortable with ourselves inside of our own skin. So tap on the side of the hand, take a nice big deep breath for me. And just move from tapping point to tapping point, repeating after me. I recognize the fact that I compare myself to others. And it isn't necessarily to be drawing comparison. Looking to others is a way to learn. Looking to others is to see a possible way forward. Looking to others is a way of seeing what is possible. It's very easy for me to fall into the trap of using how others are presenting themselves as the standard I am holding myself to, as the measurement as to if I am doing a good job. as a way of seeing if I am being successful at life. The problem with doing this is it is not a fair comparison. I am not comparing like for like. I am comparing how other people are presenting themselves with what I'm experiencing inside of my own head. With what I am feeling inside of my own heart. That is not a fair comparison. Everyone is trying to put on a brave face. Everyone is trying to show their life at its best. Therefore, what others are presenting isn't the full representation of their experience. When I do this sort of comparison, I'm not treating myself kindly because I'm not doing a fair comparison. When I feel bad looking at other people's social media feeds, It is because I am comparing my true self to their presentation of what their life is like. I give myself permission to be easy with myself. I give myself permission to recognize the truth about the way people present themselves in the world. I want to continue to strive for better. I want to be healthier. I want to be more successful. Comparing myself to others is not a useful way of doing that. I 
I give myself permission to let go of the comparison. I recognize that sort of comparison is not fair to myself. This does not mean I'm going to stop trying. This does not mean I'm going to stop improving. It simply means I'm going to choose a more accurate comparison to see if I am achieving my goals. It is time for me to compare myself to myself and no one else. I can do this honestly. I can do this fairly. I can do this and keep evolving without being overwhelmed by the comparison. Nice deep breath. One thing you might consider doing if you are noticing yourself falling into the trap of caparanoia is to pay attention to who or what is triggering it. Sometimes it is a particular type of post. Maybe it's something about a family or work achievements, or it could be a particular person or type of person that is doing the posting and to see what is underneath that, giving yourself the opportunity to investigate and recognize the fact that it is okay to learn from what is outside of us without beating ourselves up for not living up to some imaginary standard, which we think others are living up to. If you like this quick little tap along, um, I'd really encourage you to pass it along to a friend. You might know a person or two. You might even have a conversation recently with someone about this idea of comparing yourself unfavorably to others. Um, I've also included a script. If you go to tappingqa.com, click on the link for podcasts and go down there for episode 483. Um, you'll have a link to the script. If you're listening to this in the web player right now above the player, you can see a link where you can download a script so you can take this with you and tap along to it. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. Some of the best episodes we've ever done have come from recommendations from listeners just like you. I can always be reached, Gene, G-E-N-E, at tappingqa.com. If you happen to be on the website, just click on that contact link. Or if you're inside of our free Tapping Q&A app, click on the contact link inside of there, where you can send me an email or a voice memo from right inside of the app. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the podcast. Remembering in podcasting parlance, subscribe is always free. You can do it in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Amazon Music, anywhere you find audio and podcast. Just search for tapping Q&A, click subscribe, click follow, so that when a new episode comes out, you are notified and you don't miss the goodness every single week. For the Tapping Q&A podcast, this is Gene Montrostelli. I hope you have a great day, and I will talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. The Tapping Q&A podcast is copyright Gene Montrostelli Tapping Q&A. All views expressed by guests are those of the guests and not necessarily of Gene Montrostelli and Tapping Q&A.